Season 2 starts in England in the year 1927. We meet a young Dorothy Spinner who is forced to do circus acts by conjuring up her imaginary friends. One of these creatures attacks the crowd and a voice inside her head tells her to make a wish. So she does and everybody dies, except for her and some guy named Niles Calder. Back in the present day, the team wakes up to yet another day in Cliff's racetrack after a repeated failed attempts to restore them to their regular size. Every day, Larry cooks some cute little pancakes served on tiny little plates that they somehow have. Jane has been drugging herself and the underground isn't happy about this because it prevents them from surfacing to protect Kay, so they think it's time for a change. Cliff drives Dorothy around the track but he starts getting flashbacks of his accident and Dorothy releases her friend Darling, so Cliff calls it off and she runs away. Dorothy goes missing the next day so the team tries to find her. Turns out she wanted to feed the rats but when they find her, they witness mommy rat eat a baby rat and Dorothy freaks out and starts releasing all her imaginary friends. Niles calms down his daughter and they all return to regular size because earlier he made a deal with Kipling at the cost of his immortality necklace. The negative spirit shows Larry that his son killed himself. DC doesn't like this cyborg character very much, so Vic leaves the team to do some stuff off screen. And Dorothy lays in bed as the imaginary voice tells her Niles is dying, but she refuses to make a wish to change that. The next episode makes a return to the circus, but this time it's from the chief's perspective. He's like, oh wow, you barely aged a bit and I'm going to die soon, so let me lock you up in Danny the street while I go on a quest for immortality. That's what led him to Paraguay to steal his fake immortality necklace. Vic needs something to do this season, so the writers gave him PTSD and sent him to Detroit on a side quest to attend a support group so that he can meet a girl named Ronnie. Larry heads out to his son's funeral and his other son, Paul, invites him to stay with them. Then some butterflies find him and he disappears. They also find out that the chief is actually 139 years old and without his necklace, he's dying. Rita explains to Jane and Cliff that they need to steal a space mineral called Continuinium from Dr. Time's helmet to slow down the chief's aging. They get caught in another time loop, Rita changes the time, and they all return to Doom Manor but without the helmet. In Jane's past, we find out that they believe K was possessed or something and they got a priest to perform an exorcism and that's when Miranda took over as primary. Episode 3 brings us yet again to the circus but this time from the candle maker's perspective. No I'm just kidding. We go to 1888 and we meet a young Niles Calder who watches Red Jack stab a woman to death before turning her into butterflies and he's not even phased by this at all. Red Jack makes note of this and secretly stalks him for over a century and he decides a scrawny weak old man would make the perfect apprentice so he sends him an invitation and drops it in his lap. In the present day, Rita goes with the chief to save Larry who's chained to the ceiling and his bandages are coming loose which exposes his radiation. The chief manages to kill Red Jack and stop his friends from turning into butterflies. Larry and Rita manages to release the other victims and they all return home to find out that Dorothy accidentally broke Danny the brick while playing hide and seek. Cliff took Jane with him to see his daughter Clara. During the drive, Jane passes out and wakes up in the underground faced with the question of who her true family is, the underground or Niles and company. They offer her the choice to either leave the team or lose primary. Psych, they just throw her into a jail cell. Cliff arrives at his daughter's house only to be rejected and have the police called against him. And over in Detroit, Vic is waiting for his date but she chooses not to show up. Continuing the theme of flashbacks, Niles returns to Danny the street to visit Dorothy in 1978. She's like, don't leave me. Danny tells him that she can't stay there forever and that she needs her father. But Niles ignores all that and leaves anyway because he thinks he's so cool. Back in the current time, Flex Mentalo shows up with the rest of the Dannysons who wants to start a party of happiness and joy and laughter to bring Danny back to life. It doesn't work at first but Dorothy starts singing and it works immediately so they thank her for her service by sending her to bed. Vic arrives back in time to join the party and Flex tries to clear Rita's mind by flexing the right muscle but it triggers a demon thing all the way in Nepal and it relocates to dance with Cliff. Then some people called the sex men show up and try to explain that Rita's energy will attract a sex demon which wants to birth a baby to wipe out all the children in the world but Jane shows up to take care of the demon baby situation. Danny heals up and becomes Danny the tire and the whole party leaves with them to live in a tire or something. Rita attends an audition which she thinks she screwed up horribly and Larry's like don't worry about it come help me clean up my dead son's house. At the house Rita gets a call saying that she got the role and Paul accepts Larry into the family. This is all a facade because Paul arranged for the DOD to swarm Larry at this very minute as he steps outside. Then this guy gets shot and they all run away with the help of the negative spirit. Cliff sees the plans for his upgrades and he asks the chief about it to which he responds he'll probably be dead before he can make it happen. Then with Vic he tries Silas but he's like man get out of here. Vic still wants to be with Ronnie and Cliff suggests apologizing to her and it works immediately and they rekindle their love. And he finds out that she used to work for a government organization called Quorum which gave her robot parts. Baby Doll and Dorothy spend time bonding this episode but it goes from bad to worse when they played hide and seek and Baby Doll traps her in a furnace and kills one of her imaginary friends. Dorothy is fuming so she makes a wish to unleash the candle maker and it somehow enters the underground killing Baby Doll and flaming Katie. The underground is reduced to 62 personalities as they mourn over what just happened. They decide to hold a few 
funeral and Miranda comes flying out of the well to explain that when you die, you're reborn. So they all believe her and dump the two bodies as Miranda becomes primary. Rita shows up at the play and it turns out they're reenacting what happened to Cloverton when it got sucked into the ground. Rita meets a young actress who's playing her and all her thoughts about the character are surprisingly accurate and it hits a deep spot when she mentions her mother. A spaceship lands outside Doom Manor and Larry goes out to meet the prisoners of the Uncharted, a team that Niles worked for back in his bureau days. He meets a lady who also has a negative spirit so they hit it off. She tells Larry how it's a blessing rather than a curse and how they both lived in harmony together. She also reveals that a long time ago they became infected with a spore and the other two are already dead but the spirit keeps her alive. Coming back to Earth destroys the spores and their souls can finally move on. Dorothy leaves behind a lighter and boards the spaceship to go to the moon so Niles and Cliff chases after her in a spaceship of their own because that may as well happen. Cliff manages to convince Dorothy to come back home but on the way back the chief ejects Cliff into outer space and Vic scans Ronnie to discover that she's slowly dying ever since they removed her robot parts. So he brings her to see Niles in the next episode but he's not home. A box shows up that definitely shouldn't be opened but a pink gas escapes from it and they all take a deep breath. Inside the package they find the painting that Mr. Nobody and Beard Hunter are trapped in except they're not there. Rita decides to shadow a beekeeper then sits down to talk with her on the porch. Then she goes on a monologue with the bees and stops a mugging later that night dressed up as the beekeeper. Larry asks Flit to teleport him to see his grandson in the hospital thinking his doctor disguise will work perfectly but they get caught immediately and teleport out. Vic insists on performing surgery on Ronnie himself but Miranda doesn't think it's a good idea. Then Kipling shows up to tell the team that they've been infected with scants and he puts on his mask after getting infected. Scants are these pink things that infect humans and try to turn them dumb. Then they extract something called idiot from their ears and turn it into uma jelly which the queen consumes to get her powers. They're too stupid to come up with a plan so they run into the painting and get taken to the queen to have their brain juices sucked out of them. But Miranda appears to be immune to their effects and electrocutes the queen to save the day. Cliff finally walks back to Doom Manor and finds Clara waiting for him. Ronnie leaves for Detroit with some uma jelly. Larry's grandson has been discharged from the hospital. Jane finds out that Scarlet is missing and Niles meets up with the candle maker then he summons Kipling and he's like oh never mind come back tomorrow. This flashback takes us to Arkansas 1954. Kay's father puts her into the well for being bad, but she drops her toy in the water. Now in the underground, Jane is worried about where Scarlet and Lucy are, but a young Kay chalice comes out of nowhere and gives Jane a quest to retrieve her toy. Jane takes Larry with her to Arkansas to find the toy, then she crawls into the well and finds the toy along with a letter that Miranda left behind. She returns both items back to the underground, but Miranda pushes Jane into the well and she sees the bodies of Scarlet, Lucy, Baby Doll, and Flaming Katie floating around. Cliff gives Clara a tour of Doom Manor as they try to bond. She tells him she's marrying a woman and he awkwardly gives her some advice and he gets invited to the wedding. Kipling and Niles are reminded of their Reese's Peanut Butter Cup sponsorship and he informs Niles that if Dorothy grows up even just a little bit, the whole world is doomed. And we see the first sign of that in the store when she gets her first period. Vic finds out that the VP of Quorum was murdered and he can't reach Ronnie. Then they find her in the next scene and she's like, yeah, I took the Uma and I killed someone and I might kill again, so fight me. Challenge accepted as the fight begins with her throwing him across the room. Then they end things by breaking up. The chief spent his last day with Dorothy in a fair but she starts getting visions of her mother. Unfortunately as we learned, Dorothy is growing up so the candle maker makes his entrance by melting some lollipops. In typical fashion this season, we start off the season finale with a history lesson. Miranda worked at a diner and she starts dating a musician. They move in together and one day she finds out that the party her boyfriend is hosting isn't your typical party. It involves a bunch of people and touching and this invokes memories of her abusive father. Miranda runs back into the underground only to be rejected and she jumps into a well as Jean takes over as primary and gives him a good punch. In the present day, the imaginary spider shows up to inform the team that they need to get together to save the world. They all show up at the fair but Jane passes out. The rest of the team are left fighting against their own imaginations like Cowboy, Silas, and Jesus. In the end, they all lose and get waxed. In the underground, Jane swims towards the light only to find Miranda's necklace and corpse. So if she's dead, who is this Miranda character? Back at the fair, her mother magically shows up and tells Dorothy she's the only one that can protect herself and she needs to stop the candle maker. Niles tells her that all her friends got waxed when they tried to fight the candle maker but he's not very convincing so she puts on her boots and conjures up a weapon to fight the final boss. 